Pokemon Legends ZA has launched and it is absolutely amazing. And because of that, I'm going to show you the best way to play, which currently needs two emulators. Because Ryujinx is a great accurate switch emulator, but sadly the game crashes at launch when it tries to make the save data. So we are going to use Citron, another switch emulator, to play the game up to the point where it saves, transfer the save to Ryujinx, and then play from there with the best settings possible. Quick note, there are already an ultrawide mods and also 60 FPS mods. We are not going to cover any of these since I want to just give you the pure experience. But of course, I will leave them linked in the description below. So if this guide helps and if you are enjoying the game, please also subscribe. I'm trying to hit 10k subscribers and let's get going. So first of all, you can download Citron. You can download the latest version right here. And it's currently version 0.8.0. And of course, it will update in the future with maybe some fixes. So definitely check the pinned comment for any updates. So download it. I already got everything downloaded right here in the emulation folder. And next up, we are also go going to download Ryujinx. So click download here. And currently that downloads the latest stable release. But if you want, you can also be on the experimental side. There we go. You can also download the latest Canary version of Ryubing slash Ryujinx. And this is pretty much getting the latest features and it is updated quite often. So hopefully if you download this version, you will get the fixed visuals earlier. So download both of them. I'm going to focus on the Canary build, but feel free to do this in the stable build. Both work just fine. So next up, what else do you need? You need the product keys, you need the firmware, and of course you need the game itself. I also dumped the game update, but this does not work on Ryujinx, so definitely keep that in mind. So we downloaded the Citron version, so let's open it up first, and I'll guide you through all the steps you might need to get started. First of all, you get the message that the encryption keys are missing, that's absolutely correct. Also, if you want, you can share your data so they can fix bugs easier. And first, we are going to install our decryption keys. So click Tools, install decryption keys, and select your product keys. That should be good. Next up, we're going to install our firmware. So this is very similar. It just needs to be extracted if you have a zip file. So open the folder and let the firmware install. Now we're good to go. Double click to add the game. And here we go. There's our game. And within Citron, you can install the update. If you do want to install the update, you can click File, Install Files to NAND, and just install the update. It's that easy. Next up, let's go over some settings. These might help with your game and how it launches. So go to Configure. Leave this at the default, at the default. Again, this can be left at the default. If you have crashes, you can try higher DRAM values. Um, that might give some more stability, but it is not a guarantee. So you can play around with that. Keep the CPU accuracy at auto. Maybe if you crash a lot, you can put it at accurate. For the graphics, you can leave everything at auto as well. I am going to increase the resolution since that just looks a lot better. You can also change the window filtering if you're running at lower resolutions on higher resolution screens. And you can add some nice anti-aliasing. For me, SMA looks quite good. For the advanced settings, here are some uh, settings that are worth changing. If you have a lot of VRAM, you can put this to aggressive, or if you have a very high-end system, you can put this to the high-end GPU. But if you have a lower-end system, put it as conservative. You can enable asynchronous presentation. You could force maximum clocks. This is especially nice on mobile GPUs. You can use asynchronous shader building. And if you run the 60 FPS mod, you might need to sync the frame rate of video playback so the videos playback at proper speed. For me, I'm not using this, so this can be disabled. Audio input. Oh, the input is uh, something important. You want to select your controller here, and it should automatically configure everything, and you can check that in the view in the middle. Most controllers are automatically supported, so that's very nice. We're not going to do anything with the hotkeys. You can actually use a network interface um this is all good all good all good and click apply click ok and we are ready to boot up the game and again we are going to play until you are at the station where the game saves so on my system this doesn't work so for the cpu we are going to put it at accurate 
And for the advanced graphics, we are going to put the accuracy at extreme. This is very heavy to run, but again, we just need to make it through the first cutscene. Uh, if this gets us through that, that's going to be great. There we go. We now have control of the game, so that's very good. And in the menu, we can, just to be sure, save our game again. That's all good. Now stop the emulation. Yep, stop it. It's closing the software. And now right click the game and click open save data location. Here is our main save and this is what we're going to import in Ryujinx in just a little bit. So now we got Ryujinx downloaded. I got the latest Canary version right here. So open that up. And once you open it up, you get the message that the keys are not found. And we are going to do basically the same steps as for um, Citron. So we go to actions, install keys, install the keys again, check prod keys, that's going to be installed. And then actions, install firmware, and we can both do a zip and a folder. I just like to check the zip. It's very fast and we're good to go. Then to set up the emulator, we go into options, we go to settings. Then here, add the game directory, and this is where your gamer is. Note that the 1.0.1 update does not work for this game, so make sure to, well, not update your game. For input, again, set it to your Xbox controller, it should automatically show up. You can leave all these settings at the default for the CPU, you can set the region to your region, of course, and set the time to match the system time, that might be nice. For the CPU, you can keep this at the default, you can use um, low power PPTC, which is nice if you have a lower core count CPU or if you have a mobile CPU. For me, I'm just going to leave it at the default. There's a hack here, and I'm not sure if it helps to put it at 200, but it says in the description, put it at 200. Uh, leave it at 200 when unsure. But for me, it's, I don't think it changes anything since it is a locked graphics setting. Um, for here, for the graphics, we can go all out. We can put it at 4K, we can use SMAA high, we can use FSR, and you can change the sharpening here. We can set anisotropic filtering to 16x, which looks great, and that's all good. For the graphics backend multi threading, for me, I did have to put this at on. When this was at auto, the game crashed for me, so put it on and it should work a lot better. The other settings can be left at the default. Again, click apply, click OK, and your game should be here. Now to add our save, so it of course doesn't crash. Right click the game, click open user save directory, and we go back to our save game, drag it on there. And right now, once we boot up our game, you will be using Ryujinx to play with the best settings possible. So there are a lot of fixes in Ryujinx, which is very nice. There aren't any flashy screens. You can properly see the cutscenes. For me, performance actually is very good, so that's nice. And the aliasing is a lot better. There are some aliasing issues in um, Citron and also Eden, which is also a fork of Yuzu. Um, there are some graphical issues in there and right here it just works fine. There's only some graphical issues on the lighting, but that is not game breaking at all. So for me, this is the best way to play the game. I cannot show any gameplay without it being blurred since otherwise Nintendo will take down my whole channel like they did before. But I hope you still got the game up and running and that you did enjoy this guide. As I said at the beginning, please subscribe if you enjoyed this guide and if you're now playing the game at the best settings possible. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.